This is how to install a completely fresh copy of Windows 7 into a laptop using a flash USB drive. Uh, you'll probably run into this message, which is probably why you clicked on this video. Uh, you're at a dead end until you can get the Windows installer to talk to the flash drive. You'll be able to get through the first few screens in, uh, you know, just fine. Uh, and as long as you can see the flash drive in the BIOS, historically you've been able to do the entire process. But a number of years have passed since the release of Windows 7 and you know, we're up to USB 2.0 and 3.0 and most people are using either flash drives or DVD drives that are running through USB ports. Uh, we don't always have those, uh, you know, installed uh, or uh, uh, internal uh, DVD and CD drives anymore and that ends us up in this situation here so uh, let's do it from start to finish um, the reason I pointed this out first is because that's the reason most people will be having problems during this type of installation onto the, your later hardware especially laptops and so the first thing we need to do is have that driver available uh, you know it's it's actually very difficult to find there's so many different laptops out there etc what you want to do is hopefully you already have Windows on that machine and what you can do is extract the driver from that machine into a backup file and then make that backup file available during the installation of Windows behind us here and then that's how you solve the problem and so I'm using this program called Double Driver it's free it was on CNET so I'm not worried about viruses uh, and then what I actually I just backed up everything I selected all uh, and then I just backed up everything into individual files uh, folders rather uh, but the main thing we want to make sure we get is the USB mash storage device drivers because that's where the flash drivers are so that we can use our flash drive so this is the one that I'm using here I'm just using this simple SanDisk uh, Micro 3.0 and it actually doesn't matter what kind of flash drive you're using uh, the brand doesn't matter actually one uh, 1.0, 2.0, 3.0 does not matter on the USB. What matters is the port that you're plugging it into because the hardware port is what the Windows install installer is looking for regardless of what type of flash drive it is. And so uh, the next thing, uh, first thing I needed to do was get all those drivers uh, uh, available during the installation and you'll see that in a few moments as I pointed out. But that's the first thing you really need to do before you start this process of trying to install from a flash drive because the in, there could be a case where it is proprietary to your particular laptop or your device where the USB driver is a bit of a hassle but from my experience these USB drivers the 2.0 the 3.0 are all very generic and you'll probably be able to fish them off the net or I may make this available for a download because it's really just drivers it's nothing to worry about as far as um, being downloaded um, from any source because you'll end up getting them from your manufacturer if you're lucky and chances are you won't be lucky in that event and so the next thing I did was I was a little bit lazy you can make a flash drive uh, you need to put um, Windows 7 or your operating system of choice Windows onto the flash drive and it needs to be a bootable flash drive and so I was a bit lazy you can do it through command prompt and I've done it through command prompt before but in this case I was just being a bit lazy and I use this program called uh, win to flash uh, by Novacorp uh, it's a legit thing it's uh, through CNET as well I didn't worry about any viruses and they have a paid version as well but uh, the free one worked out for me just fine and so the purpose of this program was to create a bootable flash disk and then feed the ISO you can go in and select the ISO whatever you're using Windows 7 Windows 8 and then put that into the flash drive and make that a completely bootable and installable flash disk and that just made it more convenient for me using that program and so then I had my flash disk uh, uh, accomplished uh, I was able to uh, see it in the BIOS and start the Windows installation process which we can see you know this is what we all want to start seeing here but uh, after you see that screen 
then uh, when you're first thing you need to do is of course start booting into the um, alternate boot modes and that'll be different for each laptop in this case I'm using a Lenovo ThinkPad 13 uh, and basically all the Lenovo series at this point in time are using the F12 key and you'll just need to find out what's appropriate for your laptop or whatever device you're using so that you can boot into the flash drive in this case I'm using the SanDisk Ultra 3.0 and of course that 3.0 is the one that's causing the problem well it's not the disk it's the interface and so we select this during our boot up sequence so that we can go into that disk and start the Windows installation from that disk and so let's find out as so I was just using F12 uh, for this going into that drive and then when we um, finally get here when we finally get access to that drive during the boot up sequence we'll have Windows 7 as a selection to start installing that onto the primary hard drive and so we select that and then we start seeing Windows is copying files and then starting Windows and then we get to this screen selecting your language and next and install now and then boom you just hit this nice brick wall of uh, confusion for many people including myself until I figured it out and so what we need to do uh, at this point in time it's already seen the flash drive you've seen it in the BIOS and historically you're fine on the BIOS as long as it can see it but uh, as I mentioned a lot of time has passed and the original Windows installers has not changed even though we've received updates from Windows that can interact with the 2.0 and 3.0 flash drive uh, ports they are not in the original Windows installation and that is the problem and so since I showed you in the previous uh, parts of this video how to get those drivers we need to make sure that they're accessible at this point in time so when we go to click browse we can choose them from uh, a source uh, whatever can be uh, seen at this point in time so right now after I've clicked uh, browse I already had it installed on that on this laptop into the double driver folder so that I could go down and fish out the drivers when this time came and so I just labeled that double driver and I went down into the USB and it's basically just generic Intel USB 3.0 uh, uh, drivers and so uh, and it was a little tricky one time I used extensible host controller and that worked and the next time on another laptop that was identical it didn't work and so uh, then I went to just uh, 3.0 root hub and I just kept going into the 3.0s until finally one of them worked and so once you get past there uh, you're all good uh, you'll see this uh, whatever you're going to install there and you'll click next and this is what you want to see okay when you you'll know that the problem is solved when you see this uh, the license terms and everything that's when it's ready to begin its primary installation and you've solved that USB uh, interaction problem and so accept those terms and then uh, don't forget to do your uh, advanced drive options if that's uh, something you need to do if you're not familiar with that check it out before you uh, possibly mess up your drive uh, this is just uh, rehashing some of the stuff for the um, Lenovo ThinkPad 13 in some cases I I'm using Acronis a lot and so uh, it, it the bottom line is Acronis would not cooperate with all the methods um, uh, for the uh, legacy and the um, what is it the UEFI whatever the new um, controller interface e, e, uh, UEFI um, uh, interface uh, settings and so you need to keep toying with those until you find the right one so Acronis can load and then that's how I would re-image uh, I would take backup images of the drive so that I could save those for later and wipe the machine clean uh, and then I could also um, restore uh, of course as well and so uh, then the UEFI usually works the best but uh, once again it was just a crap shoot with Acronis on this one and so that's how that went and so basically that's where it ends for you guys uh, the installation you can proceed after you started to see these screens uh, and you can see your partitioning if you're gonna do advanced partitioning you're done you're on your way and that's where this video ends for you but I'm gonna keep going here for the people that use Acronis and so uh, when we can finally um, 
in this Lenovo ThinkPad 13, um, the drivers were all the same. Just wanted to mention that you do need to toy a bit with the um, BIOS settings to get Acronis to work uh, on the Lenovo ThinkPad 13 and possibly other IBM versions or other laptops until you can finally, finally get through Acronis. And it's really, it's just a matter of toying with legacy versus UEFI versus only legacy until you finally get through the Acronis and then you're done.